Netscope for Web provides web content filtering, which helps provide a safe and compliant experience for your users as they browse the web. Use category-based web content filtering to enforce acceptable web usage policies to manage your users' internet access. Let's take a look at web content filtering in action. Here is a scenario where a beverage company wants to block its employees from going to competitors' websites. We can start by searching for known URLs to determine how they are categorized by Netscope for Web. Next, we could create a custom URL list that contains the websites of our competitors. We can simply type in the URLs or alternatively upload a CSV file with a list of the URLs that we want to import. Now that we have a custom URL list in place, let's add that list to a custom category. First, we can optionally bring in multiple existing categories to form a custom category. Since we want to focus on competitor websites only, we can skip this. Next, we can choose the URL list we created and optionally include or exclude any additional URL lists. Let's simply include the URL list named competitors that we just created. We'll also name the category competitors as well. Now that we have a custom category with the URLs that we want, the final step is to create a policy that will block employees from accessing these competitive websites. The first setting is the target users. Netscope for Web integrates with directory services like Active Directory so you can bring in groups and OU. In this case, let's use the default of all users. Next, we will choose the target category for this policy. Netscope for Web is part of Netscope Cloud Security, which also covers SaaS and IaaS in addition to Web, all from a single unified policy interface. Here you can optionally choose any number of the thousands of cloud services supported by Netscope Cloud Security, or select from a category of cloud services or websites. Let's go ahead and choose the website category we created named Competitors. We can optionally bring in DLP or threat protection into this policy. This is useful if you want to protect against sensitive data loss or advanced threats for the target cloud services and websites you are choosing for this policy. Let's skip this for now. Next setting is the target activities for this policy. We can optionally make this granular and allow access to the competitor's websites, but don't allow upload or download access. But in this case, we want to block access altogether. The last setting before naming and applying our policy is set the action to take. We can simply alert the admin and make this an auditing exercise. But in this case, we want to block access and use a default template that we have in place to coach the user. With our policy in place, let's observe a user attempting to go to one of the competitor's websites. As you can see, the user was blocked and presented with a notification. That was the end user view. Let's take a look at the security analyst view. Here we see a list of the recent alerts. If we click on the most recent one, we get details about the policy that was triggered, info about the user, the device they were using, the browser they were accessing the web from, and the location of the user, in addition to info about the website and source and destination involved in the session.